courtroom. Counsel for the state are present. Funds for the cause, so to speak. Yes. Uh, 
over what period of time? Um, from, I think the first time I volunteered at a fundraiser was maybe 2009 era? 2009. 2011, for certain forward. Okay. Do you recall at the deposition sort of marking it as 2012 to the present day? Um, that sounds reasonable. And you have raised over, at this point, $35,000? Yeah. Over $50,000? Um, probably. I don't have all these big counts off the top of my head, but I think it's reasonable to say over 50. Does that go um, on the books, so to speak, of the, the four convicted men when they are in prison, or does that go to other? Well, money goes to the Alaska Innocence Project. Um, TCC, I've sometimes helped with TCC's fundraisers. Um, and, you know, I, you'd have to ask them the, the TCC essentially where they, how they delegate their funds. Um, sometimes when we have fundraisers, we have like a copy can or donation so people can donate directly to those men so they could have money in their books if they insignificant amounts. And you are the person that has facilitated that over the last three years? Um, I have facilitated it. I'm probably not the only person who has facilitated that. Who, who else has facilitated that? Um, I know, for example, for George, that Mona, um, his stepmom, has um, made that deposit to him. Um, I think Hazel has sent money to Marvin. The best of it, money that other people donated to them. Sure. Okay. Have you also um, lobbied um, the governor's office for the format? Yes. Uh, we, at one point earlier in this trial, um, read with Mr. Roberts some correspondence between you and him about a woman named Rebecca in the governor's office. Do you recall corresponding with him about Rebecca? Um, I've read the letter. Yeah, you showed me the letter. I think it a deposition. Or, uh, yeah. Do you remember uh, who that is? I do not. But you characterized her as somebody who had the governor's ear? I don't recall characterizing her that way. All right. And as you said <coughs> today, you don't recall who Rebecca is? I don't know who she is specifically. Through the years, we've made contact with um, the governor's office and different politicians and legislators. Different governors, obviously. This case has covered a long period of time. Um, and they have a variety of employees and people that they often assign contact to. And your lobbying efforts are efforts to uh, free these formats? Um, ultimately, to bring attention to this case as a wrongful conviction case and attention to the issue of wrongful conviction in the state of Alaska in general. Okay, so you've advocated on behalf of other defendants? No, not specifically. Okay. Do you work, have you worked with Brian O'Donoghue? Brian O'Donoghue was my professor for a time. Um, we haven't worked together. Do you collaborate with Mr. O'Donoghue in efforts to um, bring attention to this case? Um, no, I wouldn't say so. Sometimes Brian is a good source of information. Brian's been getting cooperative about, say, like, you know, letting me ask questions or something, or, um, you know, that kind of thing. But Brian has stuck, you know, really to journalism. And I've stuck pretty firmly to advocacy. So you don't, uh, it's your position that you haven't collaborated with him? I mean, we've exchanged ideas or information, we've had conversations, but we haven't collaborated on like a singular project or a singular effort. Okay, I, I get the clarification. Yeah. And you've, you've shared information, yeah. you've shared ideas. Sure. And uh, those are ideas are an effort to uh, bring attention to this case. Um, no, I think the kinds of ideas that I would share with Brian, for example, would be, you know, hey, have you ever contacted the jurors from the original case? 
do you have any idea whether or not that you how you get a hold of him? Something like that. Uh -huh. And you did read his series. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you know that he contacted the jurors, right? I didn't memorize this series, but All right. yeah. Um, and you uh, your work for the Alaska Innocence Project. How long has that gone on? I think from late 2011. To the present. Mm -hmm. um, have you in the past provided information that you've obtained to um, Mr. O'Donoghue about your efforts? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure I know what you're asking. What information have you provided to Brian O'Donoghue about your efforts on behalf of the board to make it um, Brian and I have had, you know, a number of conversations and exchanges about, you know, my advocacy work or, like, fundraisers coming up, things that have been written. Um, I think you've got our, you have our emails, that's probably a good characterization of kind of conversations we've had. So, my question was, because you said that you'd shared information, you'd shared ideas mm -hmm. with Mr. O'Donoghue, can you tell us today, from memory, what information you have shared with Mr. O'Donoghue about the case? I mean, there's, Brian O'Donoghue and I have largely discuss the case as it exists on the public record or re, you know, reporting of the case, things like that. I, I couldn't list specifically every element of the case that we've discussed. Have you discussed the current litigation with Mr. O'Donoghue? The, like the post-conviction relief? Really? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. What information have you shared with Mr. O'Donoghue about the post-conviction relief? I can't think of any information that I've shared. I can think of, you know, more of conversations. What do you think about this? You know? Okay, so is that the. Um, what did you think about this article about this? Or, you know, things like that. Uh, have you shared ideas? You, you said that you shared information and ideas with Mr. Mm -hmm. What ideas have you shared with Mr. O'Donoghue about the mm -hmm. current? Um, well, Mr. O'Donoghue is my journalism professor, and I'd say that's kind of the type of contact I've had with him about ideas. Like, hey, Brian, I was thinking, you know, or Mr. O'Donoghue or whatever, I was thinking about writing, you know, about this or something. You know, you think that's a good idea, or has this already been covered, or, you know? And that's because you're a pretty prolific writer about the case? Um, sure, I'm a prolific writer generally. A, you, you have a blog about the case. Mm -hmm. Have you, well, in those conversations that you had with Mr. O'Donoghue, have there been any leads exchanged between the two of you? Um, none, that, none that come to mind. <laughs> Um, who is uh, Edgar Henry um, and his uh, relationship, if you recall, to George Freese? They were they are very close friends. And and were at the time of yes. these events. Yeah. And that Mr. Henry testified in the trials. You're aware of that? Yes. Who is uh, Rico DeWilde? A friend of mine. Advocate for the four convicted men? Yes. Um, do you recall <coughs> writing about him in letters to Marvin Roberts? I recall uh, reading the letter in my deposition. Would that discuss Rico? Okay. And do, so do you recall writing to Mr. Roberts about Rico DeWilde? 
Um, yeah, I remember the letter. Do you recall writing to Mr. Roberts in that letter about Ar Arlo Olson? Um, so I remember reading the letter. You showed me the letter, and I'm familiar with the letter. It's not like I remember sitting down and putting pen to paper. I wrote that letter, and it has it mentions both Rico and Arlo Olson. Um, it also mentions somebody uh, with, it appears, initials. D M C K. Uh -huh. Do you recall that? Yes. And who is D M C K? I think I can't be completely sure, but I think that I was referencing Daniel McKinney. And Daniel McKinney was uh, a source in the investigation. Daniel McKinney was a person believed to have information um, in the case. Yeah. Was he one of those? Was he a public defender client about whom um, you had some attorney client information? Objection to the foundation? Well, she answered no. Uh, do you want to withdraw the objection in light of the answer? Okay. Your Honor, may I approach? Yes. I'm going to show you uh, some of the. Did you have a Y? <coughs> Does that sound about right to you? I'm going to trust the post office on that one. Okay. Did you uh, correspond often with Marvin Roberts? Um, yeah, we corresponded regularly, I suppose. How about with Eugene Gunn? Um, with I corresponded some with Eugene Bent. And um, at your deposition, you turned over a, a number of letters that you received from him? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I want to show you a portion of a couple of those letters. Okay. Uh, my apologies. this bundle that's called EX. Mm. 
Ex is a portion of State's Exhibit CW, and I would ask that Ms. Monroe be permitted to review the entire she, document. She's looking at, at EX? She's looking at CW and EX. She's looking at she, the entire report. She has both. She has both. Okay. And there's some two different. Okay. Oh, sorry, just give me a quick second. I'm going to read it. Sure. Make sure it's done. It's just simply an excerpt from this previous exhibit. <coughs> it is. Okay. Yes, I have both of these. <coughs> and right now. So, um, do you recognize that as correspondence that you received from Eugene Becker? Yes. And the exhibit, the two page exhibit that is EX, um, uh, shows us Eugene Ben's signature. Well, the exhibit that I have that's labeled EX appears to be maybe five pages. Okay. And, and then I have this two-page document right. with yeah. no label. Okay. That's that's what's going to be. That's what uh, Judge Lyle has as EX. The, okay. So, so we'll the, call this one EX. <coughs> um, just this. Yes, this shows Eugene Ben's signature. All right. Hold on a second. You've got... My in court clerk doing copy and yeah. she's not doing any logging. So we're going to stop until she's done making copies. Thank you. Okay. okay. You doing all right now? Okay. Yes, Your Honor, it's a excerpt entirely out of context from State's Exhibit CW. 
which should be considered along with it. It's also hearsay and irrelevant. Okay. What's the state's response? For the signature, Your Honor. What is the relevance of Mr. Bent's signature? There's been an allegation that Mr. Bent didn't sign a diagram. Other examples of his signature are relevant. Mr. Bent admitted that he signed that document. He said he wrote his name on that document. That's my recollection. Is that the only reason why you are offering this? Yes. Well, there seems to be a recollection that he admitted that he signed it. And I recall that he said that he signed it. I take it that the petitioners agree that he signed it. Yes. So now you have a stipulation. Now I have a stipulation. All right. So EX is not admitted. It's unnecessary. Do you have, do you recall receiving other correspondence from Mr. Bent? Yes. And saving it? You have the letters that I sent you. So the answer is yes? Yeah. All right. I want to, may I approach Your Honor? Yes. EY. Your Honor, given that this is quite a lengthy letter, which is not, this is the first time I've seen it as a state's exhibit, 